Hallelujah. Amen. As you take your seats, we want to get into the word tonight just for a few minutes. How many of you all need a word from the Lord tonight? I want to say to my brother, my friend, Travis, we thank God for you for this amazing band. I'm not going to be before you long tonight if you sit in your seats and the Holy Spirit, I'm praying, will take over this place continually because somebody needs a word tonight. I want to thank God for the woman of God, Nathalie Parker, who has just been phenomenal. Can we praise God for Nathalie? Can we praise God for this design team and just for all the wonderful things that they have done? My name is Kevin Merrill. I have the great privilege of serving as senior pastor at Cascade United Methodist Church right here in southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Come on. How many of you all know about the SWATs in here? Southwest Atlanta, Georgia, we are so grateful to be with you. I just want to give you a quick word from the Lord. I know there are folk out in uh, Atlanta tonight partying up. Uh, they are partying from the, uh, from, from the bank head to buck head. But can I tell you, beloved, it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight where we can have a Holy Ghost party. Amen. And so I want to lift up for you tonight a very important passage of Scripture just to encourage you, those who perhaps are looking for something from God. Daniel chapter number three, verses 26 through 27, just simply say this. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. Mm. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and watched this. And they saw that these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair on their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. I just want to highlight really the second part of verse number 27. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. I want to talk, teach, and preach just briefly for a few moments from the thought, I'm not afraid to walk through the fire. I'm not afraid to walk through the fire. We are at the Lit Conference tonight. And there are some people in here who at some point in your life, as you are considering this call to ministry, as you are considering this walk with the Lord, at some point you are going to have to walk through some fire. And I've come by to let somebody know that the call to follow God is both an important and it's also a difficult call. On the one hand, it's important because you get a lot of satisfaction from serving the Lord. You get a lot of satisfaction from calling on the name of Jesus. You get a lot of satisfaction from preaching the word of God. I love being here with y'all tonight. Y'all so crunk and y'all so lit. I'm enjoying being here in this space tonight because it's satisfying to fulfill your call from God. It's satisfying to preach what thus says the Lord. It's satisfying to see people who have been sick healed. It's satisfying to see those who have been lame get up and walk. It's satisfying to know that when you have a call from the Lord, the Lord has already anointed and blessed your life. It's satisfying to know that. But on the other side of it, ministry in and of itself can be a trip. I've come by to let somebody know that you will have dangers, toils, and snares in ministry. That sometimes you will wake up in the morning and you say, Lord, why in the world did you call me to this? Why are you speaking to me late in the midnight hour? God, leave me alone. I'm trying to do my own thing. On that side of it, it can be a trip. It can be both important and rewarding and ministry can be a trip. That's why I am convinced that unless you have the anointing of God on your life, you will never be able to do and walk in the things and the ways of God for your life. I've come by to let somebody know that the reason that you are here is because you have heard something from the Lord and God is saying that you might not see it clearly right now, but the one thing I can tell you that you do have going for your call, here it is, are you ready? You are anointed for this. And somebody needs to know what the anointing is. I love it, what E.M. Bounds says in his wonderful work, Power Through Prayer. Here's what he says. He says, what the church needs today is not more machinery. I like that. Not more organizations or more novel methods, but what the church needs are men and women who have the Holy Ghost. What the church needs are more people who can be used by the Holy Ghost. He says, the Holy Ghost does not fall on machinery. The Holy Spirit falls on men and women. And I've come 
trying to let somebody know that the only way you're going to tap into the anointing that God has on your life to fulfill the call to which God has called you is that when you say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, and I need you to fill me with your Holy Ghost. Now, I thought I was in a lituation tonight. I thought I was in a place where somebody knew about the Holy Ghost. My grandmama knew about the Holy Ghost. My grandmama used to say something like this, when I feel the Spirit moving within me, then I start dancing. When I know that God has been good to me, there's something about the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you, beloved, the reason that you are anointed is because God knows at some point on this Christian journey, you are going to have to walk through some fire. You're going to have to go through some situations in your life that you don't understand, that you're questioning God on. As a matter of fact, I know I'm on CAU's campus, so some of y'all know already what hardships have looked like. Some people think that just because you are in college, everything is easy, everything is gravy, everything is smooth. But I've got some witnesses in here who had to struggle to get to this CAU campus. If folk only knew your story, oh, I'm in your Kool-Aid right now. If folks only knew what you had to go through to get to where you are today, you have had to go through some fire. And let me tell you something, friends. I have discovered in this walk with the Lord that where we are as a 21st century church, and let me speak more clearly about the United Methodist Church, we are not going to move forward unless we've got some Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, preachers and, belo- and and those saints of God who are willing to walk through fires. Okay, I'm not getting through. Let me help you understand something. You've got to look then about fire through the lens of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are three brothers who understand something about walking through the fire. Now, let me give you briefly some context so that you can shout appropriately. You need to understand that you don't need to shout about everything. Sometimes you need to get some context before you start your shout. Let me tell you what's going down in Daniel chapter number three. The Bible says King Nebuchadnezzar is a king, and you've got to understand something about Nebuchadnezzar, and the reason that you can know about Nebuchadnezzar is because you understand who his father is, King Nebuchadnezzar. It was King Nebuchadnezzar, beloved, who defeated the Assyrians and liberated the Babylonians, thus providing Nebuchadnezzar, his son, a capital investment to start his kingdom. Hold on. Let me tell you about Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, the history books record, was a crazy, unstable, shallow, self-centered king. Watch it. He ran on a political platform that said he wants to make Babylon great again. <laughs> which ultimately meant enslaving the Jewish people, overtaxing his empire so that he could erect large real estate structures larger than the world had ever seen. And by Daniel chapter number three, the city of Jerusalem has been destroyed and a large group of Hebrews have become slaves in Babylon. Here it is. You know four Hebrew boys that stand out. They are Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says these boys distinguish themselves by their intellect and as a consequence, Nebuchadnezzar pronounced promotes them to generals, watch this, in the province. But you need to understand they are Hebrews in Babylonian captivity. Here it is. It's important to note that this king had an obsession with gold. Don't you miss it? He had an obsession with gold drapery in his office. He set up structures of gold, and he decides to erect a gold monument to be worshipped by all the people in Babylon. In fact, Daniel chapter 2 tells us that this monument, watch it, had a head of gold. Somebody needs to watch CNN. Somebody needs to know who's at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. He had a a head of gold, and the body was made of lesser materials of silver and bronze, indicating that Nebuchadnezzar was supreme over all kingdoms and that his people were inferior. And watch what he does. He makes them at the sound of the Babylonian national anthem. He says, when the anthem starts to play, you need to bow down and worship me. He says when the anthem starts to play, an anthem tethered with oppression, he says when the national anthem starts to play, an anthem reminding people that these are the divided states of Babylon. When the anthem starts to play, an anthem wrought with the appearance of patriotism, yet existentially marred by Babylonian police brutality. And white, I mean Babylonian supremacy and systemic oppression. And the king says when this anthem plays, everybody needs to bow down and worship this image of injustice and watch it. Every patriotic Babylonian bows down. But there are three Hebrew boys who say, I refuse to bow 
to this graven image. In other words, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are all the way woke. And I've come to let somebody know that if you're going to have this call to ministry, I believe God is raising up a group of young people who are woke to stand against the fires of systemic racism and oppression that we see in our world every single day. You can't call yourself a child of God or enter into ministry and be silent about what we see. So whenever you are called, what we learn from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is that you are never called to kiss the ring of the powers that be, but your ultimate call is to speak truth to that power, to do your homework, in other words, and to stay woke. And when they don't bow, check out what happens in the text. The Bible says some Chaldean haters go to the king and they say, King, your boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refuse to bow to your image. He says, essentially, King, you need to understand these boys of whom you gave Babylonian names, they refuse to bow to your image. The Bible says the names, watch it, are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But you've got to understand those are their Babylonian names. Those were not the names given to them by their forefathers and foremothers. Those were not the Hebrew names given to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In other words, they went to Babylon, watch it, but they didn't forget who they were. And some folks, you got to understand it, friends, some folks get to certain positions, they get certain degrees, they get certain letters behind their name, they in a new empire now, they in a new sorority now, a new fraternity now, and now they don't know who they are. They forget who God made them to be. And I've come by to talk to some folks at Lit tonight, you know who you are. Hebrew names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you have to understand, are three very powerful Hebrew names. They are the Hebrew names Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They are not the Babylonian names that were given to them. Let me tell you something. You have to operate in the identity that comes only from God and not from other people. You can't lose yourself and who social media says you should be and who your friends say you need to be. You've got to know who God has called you to be. Somebody's asked, well, who does God say I am? God says, I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Who does God say I am? I'm the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Who does God say I am? God says, I am more than a conqueror through the one who loved me. Who does God say that I am? You've got to understand that you who God says you are. And so let me get out of here. The Bible says that these three Hebrew Hebrew boys, when they refuse to bow, Nebuchadnezzar goes to them and he says, all right, guys, here it is. Y'all need to bow down. Bow down to this image. And this is what they say to Nebuchadnezzar. Don't you miss it? They say, king, O king, we know who you are, but we will never bow down to your graven image. Why? Even though you gave us food to eat even though we can go to any college we want to go to now, even though we got a little money in the bank account, even though we've got a little social status, I know who I am. And when you know who you are, you don't let anybody tell you to do what God hadn't told you to do. The Bible says, don't you miss it, that they are as a consequence sent to the fiery furnace. I told y'all this king had an issue with his temper. And he turns up the heat on the fiery furnace seven times hotter than it should have ever been turned up. And the Bible says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are bound in chains. And they are taken to the fiery furnace. Now, lest you miss your shout tonight, I want to let you know there are three things you need to understand in this text. And they're rooted and grounded in the names of these young men. Somebody's going to ask, Pastor, how is it that I walk through the fires of life and come out without any smoke damage? Let me help you out. you got to first understand who you are and walk, number one, in the disposition of Hananiah. Who is Hananiah? Hananiah is Shadrach. But the Hebrew name for Shadrach is Hananiah. You see, as long as Shadrach is walking not in his identity, he'll never make it through the fire. But because Shadrach knows he's really Hananiah, he can walk to the fire. What does Hananiah mean? I'm so glad you asked. It means, in Hebrew, it literally means Yahweh, God, has been gracious to me. In other words, here it is, Hananiah 
understands that there is a God who is enabling him to walk to the fire. Now, somebody's going to ask the question, Rev, this sounds crazy. The Bible says when they're walking to the fire, it says that the men who were taking them to the fire, the fire is so hot that they are subsequently killed, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego make it into the fire. Hold on, you missed your shout. Some of you think that when you get into fire, that's a curse from God, but I've come by to let somebody know it's grace that puts you into a fire so that God can start developing something in your life. Help me, Holy Ghost. Is there anybody in here, you realize that if it had not been for God putting you in some fire, you never would have been the person you are now. You never would have made it through the dangerous toils and snares. It was grace that put you into the fire. Okay, I'm still not coming through. Hold on, hold on. Uh, How many of y'all love the Black Panther? You love the Black Panther, Wakanda forever. Amen. Wakanda forever. Let me tell you what grace is. Grace is when you are a T'Challa and you get defeated by a killmonger and you fall over the side of the cliff and then your mama and your sister and your boo go up the side of a mountain to see M'Baku and they go to M'Baku and they don't think that God is, that you have been saved. They don't think that M'Baku has gotten you. They think that you are dead. They think that all hope is lost and then M'Baku says, hold on, let's go to this other room and they go to the other room, beloved, and you got to see what happens in the Black Panther. They go to the other room, and they see T'Challa laid out, even though he's half dead, but watch it, he ain't all the way dead, because you got to understand, you might have gotten here limping and hurting and trying, but you serve a God who took you into the fire, and you ain't dead yet. Oh, my God, but T'Challa teaches us something because T'Challa's boo goes and watch it. She sneaks into the back of the house and she gets the heart-shaped herb. And then she did takes that heart-shaped herb. She pounds it down and then she puts it into T'Challa's mouth. And T'Challa becomes a new person. And watch it. T'Challa goes back to Killmonger and he says, Killmonger, the challenge is on. Let me tell you what grace is. Grace is when you should have been dead, but somebody grabs you and somebody nurtured you and somebody put the spirit in you and as a consequence you can say devil the challenge is on is there anybody up in here you got some grace (laughs) you got some grace Ah. hold on stay right where you are let me give you number two and number three because you've got the disposition of Hananiah, but watch it, it's Shadrach and Meshach. Hold on, that's his Babylonian name, but what is his Hebrew name? His Hebrew name is Mishael. It simply means, I am what God is. Oh my God. Mishael literally means in Hebrew, I am what God is. The Bible says they get at, to the gate of the fiery furnace, and when they walk in, I don't want you to miss your shout, the Bible says King Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fire, and there There's not three people, but there's four people. Hold on. Don't shout too soon. Tell me how in the world you can get four people into the furnace. How did the three make it into the furnace? And Mishael teaches us something. Whenever you walk to the gates of fire, you don't get there by yourself, number one, but somebody always meets you there. Tell me how God woke me up this morning because he met me at my bedside. Tell me how God got me through class today because he showed up at my desk. Tell me how I got through worship tonight because God was sitting in my seat before I walked up in here. How am I going to leave tonight? I'm going to leave steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that my labor ah, is not in vain. Hold on. Let me give you one more. I'm out of here. Can I give it to you like this? Not only do you have Hananiah and Mishael, but it's Shadrach, Meshach, and, come on, talk back to me. It's Shadrach, Meshach, and a, hold on, that ain't his real name. (laughs) Because his Hebrew name is Azariah. What does Azariah mean? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. It means Yahweh has helped me. Now, I know we are lit tonight, and I know we about to get up out of here, but is there anybody in here you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you wouldn't have woke up this morning, put on your shoes, put on your pumps. You wouldn't have put your weave the way that it needed to be set. You wouldn't get through the door that was open for you if it had not been. 
for the Lord on my side. Uh, uh, uh. Look, I... <laughs> I, I, I look, I, I look. I didn't come to do all this tonight, but when I think of how good God has been to me, my something makes my soul get happy, y'all, and my soul is getting happy tonight when I think that it was only God that helped me. Hold on, let me give you a last shout for the night, because the Bible says, don't you miss this? The Bible says that when they saw that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, don't you miss it? It says the king goes to the furnace. And he takes all of the haters. To the gate of the furnace. Now hold on, in, 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 my, in my etymological mind, it messed me up why it is God would bring haters and the king to the furnace. Hold on, don't you miss your shout. The furnace hadn't been turned off yet. Sometimes you need to realize the only time God is going to bless you is when he lines people up who hate on you to begin to witness what he's about to do for you. Haters going to hate, but worshipers going to worship. Praisers going to pray. Oh, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. We got to go, we got to go, we got to go. Let me give you this one last thing. Because God has a way of confusing the enemy on your behalf to the point where the enemy has to start recognizing your God. It's right there in the text. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar tells all the haters of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he says, these are servants of the Most High. Now, you need to do your Hebrew homework because God has a name for that. Whenever you see God in the Bible, there's a name for that. And that name that King Nebuchadnezzar recognizes is the name that you need to keep with you every day and night. It's the name El Elyon. It means the most high God. It means that when I come out of my fire, watch it. The Bible says there was no trace of smoke, even though they had been having a party inside of some fire. So when I call El Elyon, Oh, y'all about to make me happy back here. It means that when God brings me out, I don't look like what I had to go through. Is there anybody who can call him? Yeah. He's the most high God. Now grab your neighbor by the hand. Put your arm around your neighbor. Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. Encourage your neighbor that he who began a good work in you.